So in part two, we have to look at what are the different allegations. So one allegation you'll see is that the server uh, that uh, housed the uh, uh, Podesta emails, that Podesta gave up his password uh, in a um, phishing hack, September around March or April. So his account may have been compromised already at that time. Um, then we have the allegation that these mails were offered to WikiLeaks by Seth Rich in an FBI file based on information they found in the department, according to the guy who exposed my lie massacre in Vietnam, Cy Hirsch. Uh, now, that's the crazy part. So we potentially have three different breaches. One breach where Liam Panetta unwittingly gives out his password. Uh, and so somebody goes off with his stuff, maybe several parties. So they've got his stuff, some of it, all of it, we don't know. Um, or nothing. Um, then we have the second where presumably this DNC leaker contacts WikiLeaks with the same related material. Uh, Podesta's emails, presumably. And then you have the third where the DNC has they've heard that Julian Assange uh, is claiming he has mail uh, and perhaps somehow they found out internally that um, this uh, uh, transfer occurred. I don't know. But uh, they seem to know that um, so I think I've painted a picture that clearly does not strictly point to being able to blame the Russians to the point where the sanctions are justified there. And uh, Mearsheimer, the dean of American Realist School of uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, he has a very big bombshell, which I will locate for you. Uh, Mearsheimer. And he talks about the Ukraine as it happens, if I'm not mistaken. And... Um, he says that they that we botched it up big time in the Ukraine. So, if you read this article and take it to its natural conclusion, um, so it's why the Ukraine crisis is the West's fault. So, if you take this article to its conclusion, you couldn't conclude based on it that we should immediately sanction Russia so that they cannot sell their oil and gas their main export to Europe. Uh, so, you know, you could imagine that takes good take a quarter of an economy away to take their main export out uh, when they're already had economic contraction um, from uh, the uh, chilling a relationship and in particular the drop in the price of oil. So you might ask why would Putin hate the Clinton dynasty and the reason is because you could make a case that Clinton's harmed uh, Russian national interests more than any figure um, since the Russian Revolution, other than Hitler, uh, because uh, under Bush Reagan period, there was a oral agreement not to expand NATO as it re in return for allowing West Germany to reunify, and perhaps for the Eastern Europe to quote unquote throw off the Soviet yoke, would be that uh, the Western NATO alliance not be allowed in, but the Clintons. They said, well, where's the written, supposedly, it's, uh, the story goes, asked, where's the written agreement? They said, there isn't one, so they said, screw it. And the Clintons drove NATO up to the Russian border, a hostile military alliance. And they also sent an entire consulting team to Moscow to guarantee that a drunk found wandering in his underwear in front of the White House before the election, looking for pizza, allegedly, when stopped. And this is no joke, Boris Yeltsin, that we spent all this money making sure that this man who should not be fit uh, to do anything without going to a sanatorium uh, became the president of Russia. Uh, and then he presided over the destruction of the uh, former Commonwealth of Independent States, which was basically the former Soviet republics that were still loosely affiliated. He, uh, so people, as the story goes, you went to bed at night thinking you were a Soviet citizen and you woke up in the morning and you were an Azerbaijani or Ukrainian and many of you may have been a Russian heritage because a lot of Russians went to the other provinces and there have substantial minority communities and this is a big irritant is that in the Baltic states and 
Azerbaijan and uh, all of these Stans, there's significant Russian minority population. I challenge you to name me one interesting critic who was skeptical of Libya, skeptical of Iraq, skeptical of Vietnam, skeptical of the CIA, uh, who has uh, come around and drank the national security Kool-Aid. Um, so why the Russia whipping boy? In Syria, as Cohen states, we face a very real risk of our of an American-Russian hot shooting conflict. It's come very close to Russians and Americans shooting at each other in Syria already. Uh, in, and in these footnotes where I'll show you these conversations, you can see this yourself. I would argue that the Russians do not have the power to swing our election. This is harder than it appears to do from outside. So we had to send an entire real consulting team really there to help craft their message for Yeltsin to get him to outperform the communists. The Russians can't bring, a, a, in this case, we're not accused of bringing consulting teams and data in. What they are accused of bringing in, of course, is a scandal. But I don't think you can attribute the uh, Clinton loss to uh, Russian intervention because uh, there were already too many other factors weighing her down. If she was that weak, any one small thing, like a breath blowing on the back of a uh, of something, uh, could 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 have uh, thrown it. It was so tight in some ways. Um, the DNC establishment embracing the Russian uh, uh, story is a death embrace with the sort of CIA Pentagon neocon axis. It is a dangerous game uh, because as Gavin Newsom says, it does not address the people's need. People are not going to the polls over some vague Russian meddling. Trump is clearly not a Russian Manchurian candidate. He's a well-known figure in America with constant media access all of his life. So he's not a double agent for the Russians. He may have taken Russian money on some of his projects. Uh, who knows? Um, Trump would not become a Russian agent because he has no need to do so. Uh, Trump would have won his. Uh, he would have won his personal battle, uh, having simply become the Republican nominee. Uh, he had no need to sell his soul to the devil, in my view. Uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, he had no previous experience. Uh, there was no need for him to sell his soul. So uh, then I would go on to say, you know, if we look at Russia, the American ruling class, Clinton, Trump, Sanders, and what is to be done? Because I make the case that we now see that the entire Congress is laid exposed, being utterly deluded uh, and, uh, and extremely dangerous. Uh, this is a dangerous situation these people don't realize uh, what they're getting into. Or if they do, it's, it could be, uh, frankly, terrifying when you're actually on the front lines over there looking at what's going on on the borders. The real meddling in the U.S. election was conducted by the DNC. Uh, this last week, I saw my most profound disconnect uh, with my national government that I have ever experienced in my life. The U.S. House voted 419 to 3 to apply severe economic sanctions to Russia. The real question is why Tulsi Gabbard went along with this. Because she was the only congressperson to publicly endorse Bernie, and the Russia story, in a sense, devalues or cheapens the assault on Bernie Sanders supporters that the system conducted, in my opinion. Um, so why did she go along with this? Imagine that. Uh, we live in a supposed democracy. Not one single congressperson dared to oppose uh, Clinton um, in the previous election. The real meddling in the U.S. election was voter suppression, not by the Russians, but by the American ruling class. For decades, we know that the poor have been targeted to be discouraged to vote, as well as anti-establishment type. Uh, so, for example, the difficulty of third parties. I would say the left, but the same thing happened to Ron Paul in Idaho, there was a lot of hijinks. Uh, disenfranchising Ron Paul would have probably won Idaho. Uh, any candidate who seeks to substantially change a party policies against 
the entrenched and moneyed, often moneyed interests who have their supporters targeted. The targeting is seeing to it that their votes are not cast, and if cast, they're not counted. And it is this election, think of it, a system that has constantly been tweaked away from one person, one vote, already has enormous resistance to change built into it. So I found it structurally created resistance to change the balance of powers, uh, you know, needing more than 50 percent, uh, when there's vetoes and things like that. Uh, but it makes radical change difficult to accomplish from the beginning. But uh, uh, when you add to, to that uh, the problems that you have with voter suppression, uh, it becomes an unimaginable burden for instituting real change. So we really have to put our backs to it and really uh, chase these rascals out come 2018, whether libertarian or progressive. We need to get people in who will not drink this Kool-Aid. And unfortunately, in this uh, round, there's only Bernie Sanders who was on the left who voted against this bill. And he might have voted for it had it been strictly for Russia. No one has the guts to make the case here. Uh, and it's indecent if they have information they're not sharing with us. Based on the information that's been released, it appears more likely that there was a leak, quite likely, from Seth Rich, if we trust Cy Hirsch, but from Craig Murray's point of view, could have been somebody else in the DNC. But Murray, Assange, Cy Hirsch are all now pointing to a link between Seth Rich and the leaks. The real crime was vote suppression. It was an old problem, a media controlled by big business, banking interests which are not averse to war when it promises more favorable prospects through war, the coverage of the war, the post-war contracts, or the supposedly quizzling forces we would have the support of in the occupied territory making for further business enrichment. So, for example, in Libya, in Iraq, in Syria, where the U.S. actually gets to ally with the dominant military force holding territory contracts, are available. All of these forces make change difficult. So what are we to do? And who are we? These problems go beyond party. The problems that are challenging the ability of everyday people to conduct management oversight through citizens government threatens people of all political persuasions. Unless you enjoy only voting for large and French power structures like the Bush dynasty or the Clinton dynasty, but even if you personally like this or that Clinton or Bush or Kennedy, the con or Kennedy, the concept of the only voices in our government being selected by unaccountable powers in back room should be repugnant to all real Americans or sensible people of any country. So what we see is a, uh, uh, in the 2016 election was a successful uh, suppression of votes in different layers. So one layer is, uh, for example, in my case, I got double registered, my work address and my home address. I never asked for them to register me at my work address, and it caused confusion. Uh, uh, that's one way you can have trouble with voting. Uh, another way you can have trouble with voting is that they report you to the wrong party. Another uh, is that they randomly purge you off of the voting roll. Another is that you go to the wrong polling place. Uh, so there's all of these. Uh, another is that the votes just don't get counted. Uh, another is that the voting machines are compromised. Uh, so I posted in the link here an excellent piece showing the enormous different types of vote manipulation that happened in 2016. In Arizona, no polling places. Puerto Rico, no polling places. New York, massive purging of the voter rolls. Six months prior, you have to change party to be able to join in the election. So all of these different ways of discouraging a challenger candidate. Uh, and then the really sickening thing was the whole Clinton method of evading the campaign law against 10,000 per contributor and being able to do that 10,000 times 50 state parties, so it would be 500,000, so it would be a million a couple, basically. And then the claim was that this was going to help local candidates, but it was all funneled straight back in the Clinton coffers it with the most insulting amount of money remaining for the local candidate. Yes, so we have a framing of Russia 
with the real assault to our democracy occurring from the established DNC interest in preventing Bernie Sanders uh, from winning. Um, and uh, uh, this, uh, this, this momentum of discouraging voting uh, spread into the general to Clinton's deficit. So you can't very well suppress everyone in the primary and end up with more in the general unless you're a magician. If you get a downward intake with the primary, you're going to have a downward intake for the general, all other factors being equal. Because if you've already voted in the primary, very likely you'll vote in the general. You've recently registered. You've been through the system recently. Um, so, the, so we have a problem with unelectable, unelected powers uh, controlling the process and normal people not being able to get into uh, power and an insane uh, 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 mentality uh, infecting this uh, leadership. Uh, so what are we to do? On the Sanders camp side, we have to prepare for the midterms. If the political oxygen is consumed on Russia and Trump, how do you make it clear what a danger a perpetuation of a Congress that voted 419 to 3 for economic war with Russia is? How... Um, and in fact, how do you advance any kind of a discussion with this kind of a waste of time and, but it's much more uh, severe than that. You've got a, a very sinister thing, a very cynical thing going on if uh, you fill out all the dots, which it makes it appear that people are knowingly framing Russia to drive an arms race and some sort of a more intensive conflict with Russia. And H.R. Uh, McMaster is a very worrisome person if you listen to his speeches. So we don't want those sorts of people in the progressive movement, we, uh, unless we can somehow uh, prevail upon them. Uh, so to summarize, the real assault of the U.S. election was by the moneyed interest and political establishment of this election. It was the Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton which represented this suppression. Amazingly, the Republican field is fractured, was not likely considered to likely to beat the Democrats for the popular outgoing president, I suppose. In other words, Obama might have had a halo. And regardless, the base could not unify around one Republican candidate. Uh, so in the primaries, we had the problem of superdelegates, the problem of targeting the poor and vulnerable will have their votes not count or cast or counted. And the winning formula has been found uh, for uh, the centrist establishments, which is to purge, to censor, to silence, to obfuscate, to deregister, to delegitimize uh, any kind of, uh, of non- uh, uh, establishment a uh, challenge. This formula is to fight dirty at every step. Smear your opponent, refuse to accept uh, uh, debates or interviews that could expose your vulnerabilities, purge voter roles, protest Republican by voter ID laws, but benefit from them in your own primaries Why? because uh, the more conservative candidates are going to be favored with, uh, as conservatives tend to have easier time having access to voter ID, other things being equal. While effectively surrendering certain red states, um, purging the, the roles, make registration more difficult, um, Close polling stations, hand out provisional ballots, use voting machines that can be tampered with, and tamper with them they did. Uh, this is a cocktail that allowed HRC to steal the Democratic nomination for Bernie Sanders, not having an exit uh, poll in California, declaring the race before the California race had even uh, been finished. It will not be forgotten. It will be used again and again and again at the municipal level, at the county, at the state, at the national level. These sort of tricks are going to be tried to uh, squeeze us towards an institutional hold and power with uh, establishment institutional uh, a politician. Again, the danger is that this was successful. And these same vote suppression systems benefited Trump in some swing state. In other words, the patchwork of vote suppression systems go, the candidate preferred by the political establishment in any given state will be harder and harder to unseat. 
which may have helped Clinton in Wisconsin, would later help Trump there in the general. What is the outrage of over Russia actually based on? No one will deny that we're meetings with Russians, uh, but they have been given a, a sinister hue in a way that meetings with form, for, uh, foreigners normally do not get such scrutiny, as if you're watching a cloak and dagger novel every time you hear a Russian name or Russian meeting. So we know the Russian narrative is being promoted and abetted in addition to any logical argument, but with nuance and emphasis, inadvertently calling Russia the Soviet Union, inferring that because Putin was KGB, he is a crypto-communist, that we are dealing with the Red, whereas Putin and his party are actually the conservatives in Russia, not a real Red. Uh, Putin at the time would be quite a bit different and likely quite a bit more troublesome to the U.S. if he were a Red. But by the 1950s, there were no communists of Russia, according to Eric Hobsbawm, the great historian on the Soviet Union, uh, meaning that ideologically the country had been squashed by Stalinism and conformism, so that all of the revolutionary thinkers were now basically exiles in the West. Uh, I guess that was what he was saying. Uh, there were no communists in Russia, so uh, but likely the fact that the communists do get greater than 20% of the vote. Uh, they have been forced to uh, re-engage intellectually. Uh, they can't be like that anymore and get 20% of the vote. So I would imagine they're doing some intellectual invigoration as a competing party. Uh, so I think it is empirical to say these allegations are being made salacious and to try to create a fiction where we're reliving a Cold War by thriller novel. I saw a movie on the airplane that appeared on this subject, particularly produced Cyrillic writing with people in various rural states of the U.S. and strange linkages to the Eastern European uh, uh, lands and uh, going back to Russia with Cyrillic script and computer screens, all like a perfect sinister plot. And what is the basis of all this? I think it's simple. Trump has to make leaks and the Russians to get Hillary's speeches and print them. Uh, within a couple of months this, this occurred. HRC's people think one of these groups obliged. Trump laid his own trap. It's unlikely Trump's request was filled by someone who heard him. It's more likely the leaker or hacker would have done this business regardless of whether Trump had begged uh, 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 rhetorically for someone to release more of her email. But if they did do this at his behest, the worst of all motives is being charged. And a foreign enemy hacked our candidate and released their private writing. There were three sources of emails for Clinton. The server, which disclosed enough through the judicial uh, court system through Judicial Watch ordered releases unrelated to leaks or hacks were the most damaging because they showed the same patterns that were to repeat in Podesta's mails and DNC mails except at a deeper level about uh, her donation patterns with the uh, uh, Saudi type powers uh, too much collusion with uh, uh, people that uh, uh, are involved in uh, uh, the what ends up being uh, terrorist uh, operations like the Saudis operating in Libya as a terrorist operation. Uh, you see mean-spirited uh, attacks on Bernie Sanders, a cozy atmosphere with uh, donors, and a, a seeming lack of awareness of how serious the conflict of interest can be in some cases, like taking money from the Saudis while Clinton was Secretary of State or just around that time with over like $20 million dollars shows either a total lapse on her judgment towards either lust for power or for money. I'm not sure which is worse. Uh, but she does seem to have a sense of unaccountability, which only a sociopath should have. The DNC leaks and hacks and the Podesta leaks and hacks were along the same vein, were a continuation of the same problems of dirty dealings against Sanders and with donors. At this point, we see no evidence of Russian modification election results and voting results. Incumbents return to power in great numbers, and Congress still votes broadly along pre-meddling lines, broad bipartisan hawkish pro-military policy, a big government social service policies against a more uh, small government tax breaks for oil policy. Uh, so a small government pro-business, pro-military Republican, and a big government social services party Democrats, but both of them bipartisan in their hawkishness on the Russia matter. Who does not buy the Russian interference argument? So I've gone over this with you folks already. I've gone over the fact that a WikiLeaks rep said that it was uh, a domestic leak. 
uh, Tim or her sh uh, shine some light on this. But what can you expect uh, of a... Okay, so I wanted to say the police did not question the last people who saw Mr. Rich, as I understand it. This is what I heard before uh, Hirsch. Now I understand there's information that's just not being shared. Um, but it was unusual how the investigation hid uh, information like the uh, autopsy result, the caliber of weapon, uh, uh, interviewing the uh, people in the bar. Uh, th this possible direction is ignored by the MSM, by and large, MSM, uh, that it may have been that internal leak and it may have been that rich. But what can you expect of a network of corporations who are managed from a small group of uh, university graduates, the Ivy Leagues essentially, and are bred for being in the ruling class, as all has been in the light stages of civilization? They run their campaign, they run the media outlets, and they are employed by the most wealthy and powerful institutions. The six great equity houses, BlackRock, State Street, T. Rowe Price, Fidelity, etc., the great banking houses, such as Goldman Sachs, the great tech companies, such as Amazon, Google, Time Warner, Comcast, although each party's interest is indeed different, the great glue of spending and windfall profits has been the national security state. The national security state is winning. Russia is a perfect foil, fueling huge military and intelligence and mobilization buildup justification. We cannot lose. We can only gain as Adolf Hitler said. The first victim of war is the truth. The truth is that what is the worst case? The worst case is Russia hacked into Podesta's emails and gave them to WikiLeaks or helped someone who did. The second is that the Russia, uh, Russia probed the U.S. electoral equipment. 